In this video, I want to talk a little bit about validating a two-step cluster analysis. I also have a little bit more information on the settings in a two-step cluster analysis. So the first thing is, how do you determine how many clusters you should extract in a two-step cluster analysis? How do you determine whether a two or three or four or five uh, cluster solution is optimal? Well, we've seen, if we go here, let's see, classify, two-step, let me just reset everything. We've seen, throw those in continuous, hit OK. Uh, it gives us this, right? It gives us this output. And the cluster quality is the way we determine if this is a good solution. And we could, I guess, go back and see two-step cluster analysis. It picked three for us, right? Last time, here it is, three clusters. Well, let's tell it to pick four and see if that's any different. Hit OK. It's not too different. Let's try two. So we can just sort of try around the automatic solution. And actually, two looks really good. It's the highest um, in terms of this cluster quality criterion. It's a silhouette measure. So, and, and this is a silhouette measure is how far are clusters from each other and how tight are they within. So, uh, co cohesion and separation is the are the words they use for that. So that's one way. Here's another way I'd like to show you. Let's do not options, excuse me, let's do output and select pivot tables and continue. And as long as I'm here, I want to mention a few things about some of these uh, options. So the, you have two different distance measures. You have log likelihood and Euclidean. When you're specifying a fixed number, it's more appropriate to use Euclidean. When you're specifying, or when you're not specifying, when you're determining automatically, uh, it's more appropriate to use log likelihood. At least that's what I've read. Now, should you use BIC or AIC? These are measures of model fit, um, per se. And from what I've read, the AIC is generally preferred over the BIC for various reasons. There's actually an article I read on, on Wikipedia, therefore it must be true. Uh, comparison of AIC with BIC. It's uh, informative and has references, and the arguments seem sound. So. If you're, again, if you're going to determine automatically, I'd use log likelihood and AIC. If you're going to specify, these aren't an option over here, but I would use Euclidean. Also, by the way, it comes up with fairly different um, solutions, which I might show you in a different video. Okay, I'm going to determine automatically using log likelihood and AIC. Hit OK. And now that we hit that, we check that pivot table um, box, we get more output. We don't just get this thing right here. We get this thing. If you double click this auto clustering table and select the AIC column, right click, create graph, line, it creates this beautiful graph. Now we want to minimize the AIC. We look here, one cluster is terrible, two clusters is a far better improvement. Three clusters is a huge improvement. Four clusters is a moderate improvement. And everything after four clusters is a, just a shallow improvement. Seven clusters seems to be the ideal, but is it interpretable uh, at seven clusters? What you might try is try three, try four, and then try seven. And see if those offer you meaningful, uh, face-valid solutions. So again, we're trying to minimize the AIC. And uh, but not at the cost of face validity. So I recommend again trying multiple solutions here where you see little elbows. And then obviously after seven, it uh, the AIC is no longer minimized. It increases from that point onward. So that is one way to select the number of clusters in a two-step cluster analysis. Hope that's helpful.